leap of faith. This is the way. Truth is, I am Iron Man. Tells me the most relentless. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Film Optics, brought to you by the Drive-In Podcast Network, where we discuss film, TV, and everything pop culture related. I am your host, Christian, and I'm joined by the man himself, Devin. And in this episode, we have a few topics to discuss. We're going to be going over our Loki episode for review later on in the show for you guys. And before we begin today's show, you can listen to our podcast on platforms around the internet. And if you're a new or seasoned listener, um, we would love to hear from you. <laughs> I was on a roll there for a second. Like I was like, all right, yeah, I got, I got this flow going anyway, but yeah, we, we would really love to hear from you guys, you know, follow us on Instagram and Twitter at film optics. That is optics with an X. Devin, how are you, my man? It has been another week. I feel like we just recorded another podcast. Like, Fast nine or something like that. I don't know. It's it's compl- it's uh it's hump day and Loki day. Yeah, so it's, it's hump hump Loki day. Hump Loki day. <laughs> or is it Loki hump day? I mean, he is bisexual, so <laughs> it's definitely an option. Yeah, he's uh fluid, so that's a lot of fun. <laughs> a lot, a lot of fun. But yeah, so like I said, we have a few topics here to get through today. We have a few new trailers that dropped in. You know, I was on the Geekly Goods uh, uh, live stream last night, the GG and Friends. Shout out to Leo um, and all the folks over at Geekly Goods. And, you know, we just got to talking about a lot of trailers out there. They were talking about Shang-Chi, and it got me so hyped that I wanted to continue the conversation over on our show uh, with a few that we kind of talked over there, but let's just get into the topics really quick before we get into the meat and potatoes. That will be our Loki episode for review. So we have a few trailers that Hollywood dropped for us this week. Um, So first off the Shang Chi trailer dropping. That that was hype. (sighs) Give me your thoughts, Devin, just lay it out. (laughs) I mean, what what took all the headlines was Abomination being back, seemingly being seemingly. back in the MCU. Yeah, facing off against Wong, what what looks like Wong. We can we can't be for sure, but looked like an Abomination versus Wong showdown in a ring, which is just <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Who would have thought we'd have Abomination back after all these years? D- I, I and, didn't. And DC can't even get Superman. <sighs> that tweet oh, was pretty funny. Got him. <laughs> but yeah, it. And um, I, I was actually surprised, like w- when I saw the trailer, you know, when we were talking about it over on Geek, uh, Geekly Goods, it was very, um, I was excited. It kind of just like it got me pumped up from the movie because like, you know, we, this is like our first full, full trailer or this is the second trailer we've gotten, right? Yeah. Yeah. So like we obviously, you know, we're starting to see a lot more about the story and whatnot. And for it's it's weird because like when I look back at all the uh, Black Widow trailers that we've gotten prior to this new one, like, you know, obviously Black Widow, Shang-Chi, everything's been pushed back for so long and that it kind of starts to like lose its traction. But then like when that new Black Widow trailer came out and we saw new footage, I was very, very like. Yes, like, you know, they, they had the Avengers theme song, like, playing for her and whatnot, and it just resurged, like, my my excitement for it. I'm not saying that I didn't wasn't excited for Shang-Chi before, but I did want to see more about, you know, the story, and this trailer definitely uh, pretty much kind, kind of blew me out of the water, for sure, just because it's, 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 it's a great kung fu, like, everything we could ever want in this movie. That, got an underwater dragon? Oh, my gosh. I'm t- this is... Okay, between we're getting four Marvel movies this year, and we talked about this last night on uh, Leo's show. Um, what I wanted to ask you this: Do you think between what we're getting, Spider Man, Far From um, No Way Home, uh, Shang Chi, Eternals, and Black Widow, do you think any of those are going to hit a billion? Uh, it's going to be tough this year of all <laughs> years. I don't know, especially since there's four of them. Yeah, we usually have three. Do you think any any are going to get pushed back? I hope not. I hope give, not give it all to us. <laughs> we we had to wait long enough. <laughs> what do they end up pushing Black Widow back? <laughs> like we already sent out screeners, but psych, sorry. Well, I, I I was thinking yesterday. I'm like, if there was one Marvel movie 
they push back, what would it be? And I feel like it could be Eternals because they're 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 still riding off of that. Uh, I, I do have a feeling. I do have a feeling. Spider Man will be pushed back. You really think so, though? Like it's a Christmas it's Sony, movie. It's Sony, and they're, it's a Christmas they're weird. Movie. Yeah, and I it's know. The closest to the end of the year. Yeah, but like it's supposed to be a Christmas movie. We can't. We can't get rid of that. Like. I, I would be afraid if Shang-Chi got pushed back because that's coming out in September. I think Eternals is coming out in November. Maybe? Yeah. Yeah. But I don't, it's, it's so crazy. I mean, the, the MCU is back and it, it, they're in full force right now. And uh, Black Widow has been getting really great reviews across the board. And, you know, we're going to be reviewing that on the show uh, later um, next week. So we got that. So anyway, let's move on here to our next trailer. We have the harder they fall. We also talked about this on geekly goods yesterday. Um, you know, it's can't, can't get enough of those guys. I, I really love, uh, you know, shout out to Leo again. Like it's, 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 he does a great job with that show and you know, we always just have a good time, but I didn't watch the trailer until yesterday and it, it kind of floored me. I was like, this is a, like a period piece. You know, I'm a big sucker for period pieces, Devin and Westerns as well. And it just looks like a grand old time, but I have not watched this one yet, but I did see the, all the casts and everything. Yeah. Pretty hyped. I'm very, very high for this one. I don't know when it released. I think it's towards the end of July. Another July movie, dude. It's it, July is going to be March all over again. There's going to be so much coming out. We have the heart of they fall. We have black widow. We have space jam. We have the green Knight. And there's a few others um, in there as well that I'm not able to think of right now, but it's, it seems to be up there, but let's move on to our last trailer before we get into the rest of the topics. We have don't breathe two. don't breathe dos. Devin, give me your thoughts about this trailer. Did this you... one, this one is strange. You saw the original one, right? Yeah. Yeah. He was, he was a so, villain. Yeah. And then in this trailer, it seems like for this movie, they're making you root for him, which is just really weird after what he did the first movie. Well, now he's not a villain anymore, Devin. He's an anti-villain. Yeah. Mm. It, it, it seems like they just kind of made like a taken story, but with him. <laughs> like, Honestly, I was thinking the same thing. I was kind of confused. Like, I'm definitely going to go see it. I need to rewatch the first one because it's been a while. But... I, I really feel like it's, um, I mean, it, it looks interesting, but everyone like everyone on Twitter is like, Oh, like, well, I guess you're saying he's an anti-villain. He's not an anti-hero. So it's like, okay, what well, wouldn't an anti-villain be a hero? Like, it's weird. I just don't know how they're making a whole movie centered around him being the good guy. Seemingly. Seemingly. Yeah. Cause it's, because from what we've seen in the trailer, you know, we have the, the pack of guys who are trying to rescue uh, the girl from, from him. And they're like, no, you know, we're trying to save you from him. And it's like, well, okay, well, who's really telling the truth and whatnot. And it's, it's really, really weird. I'm not entirely sure why that is, but I don't know. We'll just have to kind of wait and see, I guess. So yeah. Ex excitement, level, uh, excitement level for that at all. Nothing. I mean, I'll see it. Yeah. 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 First one was good. Yeah. I definitely got to rewatch that first one again, man. Oh man. Anyway. So pretty much done with the trailers. Gave her a little thoughts about that. So let's just move into a little bit of Hollywood news here. I love talking about the Hollywood news here on the, on the podcast. You know, we can't always talk about superheroes. So it's, it's important to, you know, pay our, our, our attention elsewhere because everyone seems like they're on the, on the Marvel DC superhero comic train, which is great, but you know, we, we got other movies out there. And speaking of other movies, we have uh knives out uh sequel. Uh, it adds Ethan Hawks to the cast alongside, uh, side Daniel Craig, Dave Bautista, Ed Norton, Janelle Monet, Catherine Hahn, Leslie Odom jr. And Kate Hudson. And it's, uh, begins to film in Greece. Oh, next week. Devin, give me your thoughts. I don't know how it keeps getting stacked and more stacked, but it does. Is there anyone how do they else? Keep adding. Yeah. Is there anyone else here that you would like to see in this role? Because I, I, I've. Is there anyone that. else left? 
I don't know. Oh, like, I guess if, if there was like one person you would love to see and not even just knives out too, because night, as we know, it is coming to Netflix. You know, they, they made a, 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 a huge deal with that. Um, so it's, it is not coming to theaters exclusively debuting on Netflix. Uh, the date is unspecified as of yet, but if there is one actor, I'll, I'll just say actor, male or female um if, there, if there's one someone you would love to see in a knives out movie who would it be well it also got announced yesterday that jada pinkett smith is also joining the cast is that so just, tr- is that like 100 percent true I, i'm not I, I saw it from i don't know if, who was if through I, I wasn't entirely sure like because i saw it camera pod mentioned it okay yeah i wasn't because like i heard that and then i heard someone else like oh no like you know it's it's you know it's not true, but it is what it is. But yeah. Um, I mean, if, if she is like more power to her, but uh, somebody tweeted, Bill Cosby is joining the cast. of Knives out too. Oh no, uh, no, 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 sir. No, sir. We're not doing that today. No, 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 sir. I, I can't, I can't believe <sighs> we're not really going to get into that. And we also like Kyle Massey, everything that was happening with him. I was like, First Drake Bell, not even first Drake Bell. I mean, it's just all these childhood actors and stars. It's like we had what Shia LaBeouf, Drake Bell, Danny Masterson, and then uh, Kyle Massey. And now this whole thing with Bill Cosby again. It's like, it's crazy out here. I'm like, well, what, what are you guys doing? Like, just you can just be like a normal star. Keep to yourself. Look at Miranda Cosgrove. She, she doesn't share her life like that. You know, she'll make her Instagram post whenever, but it's like, you know, like, or just, just be like Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks is never in any scandal or anything. He's chilling with his family. Except for, except for his weird son. Yeah. Chet. <laughs> Chet. <laughs> yeah but hey it's I, I don't know what's going on with these celebrities man it's it's all over the place but um a, a person i would like to see in knives out um i mean i know it's a little i would actually like to see um like emma stone possibly or even florence Pugh. i mean i know they're more i wouldn't say if there's like a-list and b-list actors but like i think either or would do a great job uh espe- especially emma stone i think um, what would be a good fit? Maybe not even for this cast, but for a uh, future Knives Out project. But you want to take this next story, Devin? I know how much you love Hugh Jackman and Vanessa Kirby and Laura Dern. How can you not? <laughs> uh, it looks like Vanessa Kirby is joining Hugh and Laura in Florian Zeller's The Son, which is a sequel to The Father, which oh, I have not seen yet. I have not either. I wonder if this is a... Um, Kind of like a uh, the like before trilogy type thing. Um, it looks like uh, you know she she was so Vanessa Kirby was uh, awarded a um, well not awarded but she was nominated for an Oscar for pieces of the one pieces of a woman and it looks like the sun focuses on Peter played by Hugh Jackman and um, S's busy life with um, new partner Emma. Uh, Vanessa Kirby and their baby is thrown into disarray when the ex wife, when his ex wife, Kate, who's played by Lauren Dern, turns up with their teenage son, Nicholas. The young man is a, uh, is troubled. Wow, there's actually a typo in this on variety. It says the young man is, is, hmm, got that one. Uh, troubled, distant, and angry, um, playing a turrent, um, uh, uh, playing turrent from uh, school for months, Peter strives to be a better father, searching to help his son um, with those intimate and instinctive moments of family happiness. But the weight of Nicholas condition sets the family on a dangerous course. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> so that, that was actually a pretty lengthy, uh, Synopsis. Yeah, that was a long one for it. Really movie was that's not even out yet, right? I was like, oh my god, like this is this is crazy. But yeah, I'm very very excited to uh, you know um, check this one out. So it's yeah, I'm not sure when it's supposed to set to release. Uh, I don't think they have a date yet, or you know, I'm sure they're just you know in the casting phase right now. So we'll just have to uh, wait and see. 
But you in, know, um, in news that really gets you excited. No, I know this. Mm, I'm good. Vin Diesel is. He keeps talking. He says the finale of the saga, Fast and Furious Ten, Part One and Part Two, will begin filming in January 2022. They're pulling a. They're pulling a Hunger Games. They're pulling a Harry Potter. They're doubling up on the finale. I don't understand this. So, like, why is this the finale when we know there's going to be an 11th? And why was Fast 9 called F9, the Fast Saga? Kind the of, titles are just all, they're just all memes at this point. It kind of just puts in, like, I, I just don't get it. Because it's like, why would they not just... They, they should have ended at seven. And we've talked about this. I really don't think Brian should be here because, and and did you hear about the, um, they're, they're, they, they're thinking about doing like a CGI, like Paul Walker for 10. Yeah, it's, it's pretty dumb. It's just like, they, they, they should, they should have just killed off the character. Like as much as everyone loves Brian, I understand, but it's like, why keep this going? Like, I mean, it should have ended the series after how perfect seven was. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I totally agree. Should have ended there on the Hobbs and Shaw. <laughs> forget, yeah. forget fast eight, forget fast nine. But, on, but on the, on the topic of titles, um, Eddie Burback tweeted that he thinks it should be called fast 10, your seatbelts. <laughs> and I thought that was pretty good. <laughs> Okay, that's actually pretty funny. That is Fast Ten Your Seatbelts. Fast Ten Your Seatbelts. <laughs> part one, part two. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, I mean, the fate of the furious, I get it, like fast eight, whatever, but I I do agree. It's just like I when 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 do you end? Like when do you know when like enough is enough? What's I mean, they, they keep making money, so there will be no end. Yeah, but I mean like they have they've yet to have a flop. That is true. I mean, pe- people love generic movies out there, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just the the casual audience goer who, who goes to the theater maybe three or four times a year to see like the major blockbusters. People who are members of the family <laughs> drinking their Coronas, you know, like and, and like I guess like the, their movie quota for the year is like maybe five or six, maybe seven to like nine. If you have children, if they want to watch something, but I just don't get it. Like my, my entire theater, like I said, they were just, they were just eating it up. And I just didn't really think it was all that funny. Like, I don't know. I'm like, I'm only here to (laughs) see what all the quote unquote hype is about. And plus it was like the only new thing that came out last week. So (laughs) there's always that. I was like, man, I really wish Black Widow came out this week. Would have kind of cleansed that away a little bit sooner. But, hey, it is what it is, man. So let's move on to our last topic here. Before we get into our low-key episode four review, we have Bridgerton actor, actress, excuse me, Ruby Barker joins the um, what is this, uh, studio, uh, studio Canal and Picture Company's horror uh, thriller titled Baghead. Uh, a very, very odd name for a title, but it, I mean, it is, it is what it is, but it, it's, you know, uh, Barker or Ruby Barker. She's joining, uh, the Witcher star, uh, Freya Allen, who's signed on to star in the uh, film Backhead. And it apparently it's, uh, I thought this was kind of interesting just because I, I, I really liked Ruby Barker and Bridgerton and it's kind of just interesting to, I was surprised they did a piece on her. to be honest. I didn't really think uh, people paid that much attention, but Baghead looks like it's adapted from the film festival uh, favorite short film of the same name and will be directed by Alberto Acordiar, who is also the director of the short. And it looks like Baghead revolves around a mysterious figure called Quote unquote, you guessed it, Baghead, a diminutive, wrinkled up person who is able to uh, manifest the dead and bring them back to our world for short intervals of time. People seek out the mysterious medium to reconnect uh, with loved, uh, with lost loved ones. And once in contact with Baghead, however, the title's true powers and intentions are revealed. And there is a high price to pay for its uh, contact with the deceased. 
So that's mm, that actually interesting. That sounds very, that sounds pretty good. Like I, I'm like, for I, how bad the title is. Yeah. I mean, baghead. Cool. I'm wrinkle face. I don't know what else you would call it. I, I feel like baghead is short, sweet symbol gets to the point. Uh, the feature will also uh, transfer. Well, well, the feature transfer will build on the storyline and take a saw like approach adding in supernatural elements. So that would be pretty cool. I'm actually kind of excited for that. Are you going to go watch uh, tomorrow war? <laughs> Devin? Um, with all a, the trailers looks really bad. Chris Pratt. <laughs> You're not a Chris Pratt fan anymore. <laughs> I mean, oh. I, I might. I There's might. also that, that horror movie coming out on Netflix. What's it called? That's getting good reviews. Um, it's like the trilogy. I think it's called like, Fear Street or something. Oh, Fear Street. Yeah, 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 yeah. That'll be interesting. I didn't know there was a trilogy. Yeah. So, so I don't know. Just a uh, wait and see. Maybe I'll check it out. We'll see. I'm, I've been looking for something new to watch. Anyway, Devin, that pretty much wraps up our Hollywood news for now. All of the topics we wanted to talk about today. So let's just dive straight into our Loki episode four review that is titled, um, into into the nexus nexus event nexus event there we go we'll be back right after this all right devin we are here we are here talking about the nexus event episode four of loki we have two more episodes left man and it has been a wild wild ride yeah. but it's it's just been crazy I, I texted you this morning after i watched i just said what an episode like wow yeah. i uh first thing i did i woke up this morning i was like man you know what it's 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 a good day it's Loki wednesday today today was technically my thursday you know going into the weekend i got one more day of work Let's go. Let's watch this episode. And I believe the runtime, the runtime was around um, 48 minutes. So it was longer than last, uh, last week's. And, which, and for those of you who don't know, there is a post credit scene for the first time. Yes. And it is very exciting. It's wild. Wild. I tell you, extremely, extremely crazy. But Devin, give me your first initial thoughts before we head into spoilers on the Loki episode four. It's, it's the best of the series so far, like by a lot. And that's saying something because the first two episodes, we both thought were really good. And for this to like, to build on that. And this also just validates the last episode because they did such a good job setting up Loki and Sylvie's relationship in that episode. There was a great payoff in this one. They did such a good job of that. Yeah. Not a fill, not a filler episode, by the way. It, it, it's no, it, it's, it's not like none whatsoever. Um, it's, it's so, I, I I'll never understand why people think of that as a filler episode because it does yeah, last week just got so much hate and I don't understand it. Yeah. And like, I mean, if, if we're talking about like rating all four episodes, then yes, like episode three would be at the bottom, but it was still a good episode. And like you said, if anything, this proves that last week's episode wasn't a filler because yeah, this this episode would be much worse if they didn't establish their relationship like that. Yeah, because it's like okay, like are we just randomly getting this connection between them when, when they cause this? It doesn't know, feel forced. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't feel forced at all. And it's like, it's, you, and sometimes you just have to take. I wouldn't even say a different quality that you kind of have to take. Um, a, like. It is a detour. They have to take a, st- a step back. Yeah. Because they, they had so much going on the first two episodes. You just had kind of had to like slow it down a little bit. Yeah. And like there's so many payoffs that happen in this episode that, you know, that carried over from the last. And it's like you, you kind of you need these highs and quote unquote lows in order for the story to kind of just weave together. But on overall, like there has not been a bad, a objectively bad episode of Loki so far. And I'm loving it. And I, I really, really wish Falcon and Winter Soldier did the same for me. It just didn't. There was, you know, like I said, it, there's there's good there's good episodes, but it's just, you know, everything that happened with that show, there's things that happened behind the scene that unfortunately had to be cut. 
And it, you know, it showed in the final project. So, or the, yeah, final project. So it's just, it is what it is. But I, I do agree with you, man. This, this episode kind of just, it wowed me. It just kept going. I was like, wait, I'm like, how long is this episode? And I didn't even pay attention to the runtime. I just kept watching. I was like, yes. We got, we got some good action. We got another huge reveal. (laughs) We got some, we got some deaths. Yeah. Potentially. Potentially. Yeah. We We don't know how it works yet. Yeah, no, we don't. And the way that we thought that they did, that it did work, but it's like we, we were eating good this episode. Like, absolutely. It just kept escalating. And it's just, you know, we we finally see how how they, you know, escape um, the cataclysmic event. But before I get ahead too much ahead of myself, was there anything else you wanted to touch on before we just dive into spoilers? Because I gotta, feel like we got to dive in. All right. All right, everyone. As soon as you hear this bad boy, we're now talking about spoilers again. We're talking about spoilers right now. So if you haven't seen Loki episode four titled The Nexus Event, turn back now and then come back and enjoy the rest of the conversation with us. So. Man, we we finally we we knew we knew the reveal from episode three about the variants or the TVA and how everyone is a variant, but it's it's everyone everyone is waking up to the truth. And oh yeah, our boy, find- Mo- our boy Mobius <laughs> is finally finally catching on, and and, and uh, now he's is it C twenty? Yeah, now he's kind of, yeah kind of dead. Um, and is it C twenty? Well, C twenty died, and then there's the other variant who kind of had that bit of a wake up call B 15. Yeah. B 15. Um, so I think she played Letty in um, um, yeah. Lovecraft country. Lovecraft. Yeah. So, so she's great. Oh yeah, absolutely. And she catches on before anyone else in the TVA. Cause she actually had it happen to her when, when Sylvie took over her body. Yeah. And which it's just, there's so much mystery here. And it's like, I mean, we had a lot of mystery in WandaVision, but I feel like there's a little bit more mystery here. Um, It's less, it's less manufactured mystery than WandaVision. It's mm -hmm. more natural. Yeah. Yeah. Because obviously, I mean, between all three of these shows so far, a lot of these heroes need therapy. (laughs) So they're they're all grieving in their own, in, in their own way. And, you know, we, we, we see, a little bit beginning of the episode with Sylvie and her, um, her flashback of, you know, her, yeah, that's, that's crazy to think that she's been on the run her whole life as a child. Yeah. And it's, like, she's somehow caused a Nexus event and we don't know what it is. And yeah, they didn't actually say what it was. She said, she just didn't remember. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I, I think that's very interesting. Cause it's like, you know, these just haul away this, this girl, like back to the TVA. And it's like, what were they planning on doing there? Were they planning on making her one of theirs? And like with the timekeepers, how does this all, you know, play a part? And they kind of do like a little bit of of like a wizard of Oz thing with the timekeepers, because we, we finally see them this episode and they're machines. It's as far as we know, but I was having, they're, they're mindless androids is what they were called. So d- did you make out a lot of what they were saying or did you have to put the closed captioning on? It's a little I hard didn't for me. really hear it. Yeah. It was kind of, their voices were very strange. Yeah. It was like, but it didn't really whoa. matter what they said at the end of the day. Yeah. <laughs> because they did. Well, if, if they were ever alive to begin with, but yeah, man, you know, t- t- tell me what, what you're thinking. What are your thoughts? You know, now that we're in the spoiler land, we can kind of just let loose and, and have fun. I, I was curious what you think. Cause there's, seems like there's a bit of a debate as to whether Loki and Sylvie are romantic in any way. Cause, cause Morbius was making fun of Loki <laughs> for kind of like falling in love with himself. But the way I see it, it's, it's not romantic. It's just like a brother, sister type love. Right. Okay. So, so to answer your question, I, I don't feel like it's romance. I feel like they're like, I feel like they do have an intimate connection, but that doesn't necessarily I mean, it has to lead to like attraction because I think it's more of they're finally starting like they haven't trusted anyone their entire lives. And it's like the only person that you can trust is yourself. So there, there you, you go. go. There you go. And I think they're finally getting that realization. But I mean, 
it it may be a one sided romance because I there was like a slight bit of me was like you know it seems that Loki's kind of putting on the moves a little bit but then that's what sparks the Nexus event. But it I'm like, I'm just glad there wasn't a kiss. Thank yeah, God there wasn't a weird kiss. Yeah, like I mean if if they want to go that route, that's totally fine. Like I wouldn't like hate it or anything if they don't. That's totally fine too. Like you know they they have everything planned out from A to B. So. We just have to see where the rest of the story takes us. But as of right now, no, I don't think there's like any sexual tension or anything, but I do feel like there is a deeper understanding of one another. So I, I, it it was, it was great how they played it off, you know, and they, they, they kind of quickly go back to the TVA because that's what kind of sparks the the Nexus event. They kind of like pinpoint them down. It's like, okay, obviously they're going to get out of the some kind of way. And so that kind of happened a little fast, but I was like, oh, wow, you know, like, okay, now we're back to where we were from the filler episode, but it's just, I, I don't know. Um, so Morbius's boss, like, wh- what, what is your take on her? Um, she's definitely got some issues. She's sneaky. She's one. got some explaining to do. <laughs> you got some explaining to do. She is like sneaky. Like, I feel like, obviously, like as of right now, I, I want. I wonder if she knew that they were robots. I'm guessing not. Probably not. But does she know that everyone's a variant? I think she does. She does now. Yeah. Well. Yeah. That that is true. Because it's unless like, she do, unless she just doesn't believe it. Yeah, kind of how uh, Mobius didn't. It was just like it. It was kind of you know Loki tells the truth like one time. And then like, there's kind of like that pause before he gets set into like that time loop with, um, yeah. was it Freya? I think her name was no, um, oh. lady Sif, lady Sif. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I forgot she existed because I blanked the first two Thor movies out of my memory. I don't so. blank them, but it has been a while since we've seen there. And I think the last time we saw her was, was it in dark the world? Dark world. Yeah. yeah, I think so. So that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> well, then again, we haven't seen Darcy since dark world either. So she's back. Yeah. It's great. I'm like, Hey guys, I, I, just, I do. I mean, it's great that they, like they bring these small characters back and reuse them for different purposes for, for bigger purposes as well. Well, I don't know what this one, do. this one, not so much. But no, it's just a fun little, I mean, more um, so than Sharon Carter. Mental, no, mental I'm prison. <laughs> it's more so than Sharon Carter, but. I mean, she might have been in, in Loki as well. May, maybe. I mean, or um, or her, her niece, the, the, the new power broker. So, you know, we got all that to look forward to. Um, <laughs> but yeah, but the, um, so like moving on with just everything that happened with like we got we got to theorize about who's leading the tva if it's not the timekeepers is it kang the conqueror our boy coming through jonathan majors see i i don't want to even think about like half of this stuff it's like because everything like we're 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 finally getting more of like another multiverse show and so many people are like, oh, Mephisto, Mephisto, Mephisto has to be there. And it's like, well, maybe. But, I mean, it could be King Conquer. It could be, crap, dude, I don't know who it could be. It could be, it could be Doom. It could, could be Doom. I mean, I guess knows? King would be interesting enough to kind of, you know, that's the new big bad. Um, I wouldn't really want it to be Thanos, but... Then again, I don't know where they are placed in time because this is a Loki from after the first Avengers movie. So this is a totally different Loki that was well, the same Loki, but has gone on a different path. So it's like, I just don't know who it could be. I guess Kang would be the number one. Uh, I was trying to watch a few spoiler, like theorized videos prior to this, but I got a little busy on my side. But uh, anyone else besides Kang or Doom that you can think of? No, no, no. Mephisto, Ralph Boner, or or if it's just one of the Loki variants, who knows? Another Loki, yeah, yeah. And speaking of Loki variants, um, you know, fast forwarding a little bit, and then we'll kind of rewind. Um, we we see more Loki variants towards the uh, the post credit scene. Oh yeah, and we I, get we get we finally get Richard E. Grant. He's playing an older version of Loki in the like comic so, accurate <laughs> costume, yeah. which is. Awful, but great. I love how they're using that now for a lot of these. 
And I love how they're making fun of them because yeah. of how just ridiculous they look. Yeah. I mean, they look great on paper, but it's like, hey, like this is what your hero will look like if we just took them straight from the comics. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's like all the people that complain, oh, it's not comic accurate. Well, you see what it looks like if it's comic accurate. It just looks ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, you never saw Hugh Jackman wearing like his yellow and like black and blue like suit from the X-Men. Like he wore a X-Men suit, but it wasn't that. And it's like. He's the only guy to ever play Wolverine. So and, uh, people love him. But yeah, so we, we kind of get Mobius gets the uh, the shtick. And then Loki also gets a shtick prior to, um, I'll just call her Letty <laughs> because, um, or not C20, um, B19, C, B, B15? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So B15 kind of helps them out because she confronts Sylvie. About, you know, hey, like, I saw something when you were inside my head. Like, what did you do to me? She's And it's like, again, the first time Sylvie or a Loki telling the truth, she's like, I didn't do anything. I just showed you what your life was prior. But I want to know how Sylvie knows that everyone's a variant. Is it because of her powers themselves? Did she just put two and two together or did she? Well, yeah, I mean, she it showed in that in the last episode where she was in that memory with uh, C20. Yeah. That was that was sweet. Like I like that a lot. And R.I.P. to C twenty man. Yeah, they just offed her. Although we don't, we still don't know how that that death stick works because obviously Loki is is somewhere, but he's not dead yet. Yeah. Well, and we didn't see C 20s body, so she's not. It seems like it kind of just. I mean, according to what happened to Loki, it just puts you into like a variant wasteland where other variants that caused trouble have gone to as well yeah it so, doesn't kill you but it puts you into like a, a variant purgatory or something that's what it seems like you've been watching heavy spoilers <laughs> um, <you> been, <laughs> or just that was something you can't I mean, it's great i just wasn't sure yeah yeah i, I, I think I'm, i watched it today but i started watching it today and then i got sidetracked had to do some things at work but yeah it was i i, I am curious because you know everyone's getting the stick here so it's like what's going to happen and where, where is Mo, like you said, where's Mobius and where, where is C20? Cause we haven't seen a body. And so it's like, she could just be anywhere, but like, I'm curious to see how, how this all unfolds. Like, are the timekeepers even real? Like is, uh, is Mobius's boss. Is she that the head honcho? We have yet to see the, the, the main villain, which is fine. It's just, little odd but not really because we still have two episodes left and i mean if episode five is anything like episode four and especially the finale then this might come on top they said all along four and five are the ones to look out for yeah and they have not lied yet no (laughs) one for one it's like you see what happens when you don't run your mouth (laughs) yeah i'm 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 very interested and it it kind of broke my heart when you know you you see the ca- the the care or the connection that Loki has. Yeah, and at the end, Loki was about to like pronounce some like something he discovered with with um, Sylvie, and he just kind of gets dusted or whatever. <laughs> he gets dipped. Dang, there we go. It was so I did not see that coming. Same thing, Mobius. I'm like, oh well, I'm, oh my god, where did he go? Like this is. Like they're just off and off. They're they're offing everyone in this. Oh, Owen Wilson is so good in this. He like, hasn't said wow yet. I don't think don't he need. Will. <laughs> I saw someone on Twitter was like, no, Owen Wilson may, might not say wow, but Mobius might. <laughs> it's like oh yeah. He's like wow. <laughs> he will get a jet ski. I know that he will. I I feel like he was some kind of professional jet ski player. <laughs> Or just maybe not sportsman. professional, but yeah, or 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 an, or an enthusiast kind of guy. I I really want to see him on that jet ski for sure. But I I I just I want to know who's behind. Like maybe it is the timekeepers, and they're like I said, they're pulling that like Wizard of Oz thing, where it's like, oh, you know, it, it's we're here, but we're fake, and you know what? It, who it could be? Miss Minute. We haven't seen her in a while. Yeah, it's been a while. So. It's, she's been a little uh, shifty there, a little, little, uh, little, you know, just creeping around, doing, doing her thing. We haven't seen her since episode two. So, and the way that like Loki tried to like hit her, she it seems like she was, you know, dodging those, those things. I, I, I think it's Miss Minute. 
I think she, I think she's a, I think she's she has to she has to have something to do with it or or Mobius's boss. She seems like she's a middleman because it sucks because Sibley's like, what was my nexus event? Like, why did you pull me? And she's like, I can't even remember. And it's like, how, wow, how long has it been? Because and they had it because they said time works differently in the TVA and just shows that she hasn't aged since it's probably been at least 20 years. However old Sylvia is. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Because Sylvia aged normally. Yeah, and she got blonde hair. I wonder how that. Yeah, I mean, she probably just dyed it, you know. But yeah, that that's very very interesting. Well, yeah, I mean, it's there's there's just so there's a lot to unpack, and it's like you know we would love to go through everything with everyone. But um, did you want to get into the scores? Anything else you wanted to touch on before we kind of just uh, get on out of here? Yeah, let's, let's do it. <laughs> All right. Um, so Devin, um, I'm I'm gonna go first with it. I I. Oof. Uh, rating wise, I, I, ooh, I, I don't want to give it a perfect score. So I'm just going to give it a solid a like across the board. Like it was just, it was really, really good. Like when I say like a plus, that's like something that that's like for an episode or even the legendary S ranking. That's more of like an episode. I will never, ever forget from this TV show. Something that will like stick with me throughout the years. Um, but right now I was going to give it a solid a, you know, give it a nice little, uh, a 90, uh, a 94. So what about you? I'm going a plus. Oh, I mean, there you go. I was it just... blew me away. <laughs> had, had me clapping throughout, like getting, getting excited and hyped for what's coming. Like, Oh yeah. It felt almost perfect. It, 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 it really, really did. It, they it's... paid off. They paid off a lot while still leaving a lot to be paid off. There you go. Even more reason why episode three is not a filler, everyone. There, congratulations. There you go. But you know, if 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 you enjoyed it, you know, let us know on uh, on Twitter, on Instagram, what you guys think. Um, from everyone that we've you know that I've seen that we know on Twitter, it's uh seems to be getting a lot of great praise out there. You know, the Nexus events. I didn't know who was going to show up, or it's just. Even if no one does show up, just like little hints of something, it's just there's a there's a crocodile slash alligator Loki. Like we it's, need, to, it's so cool. We need to see this Loki. Kid, kid Loki's gonna be a little little slimy little kid. You just know it. <laughs> a little baby frost giant. <laughs> yeah, but oh man, so that that pretty much concludes you know uh, the show here for uh, episode four of Loki. You know it's. It's it's been an honor to you know talk shop about this every single week. I don't know what we're gonna do with our lives after this is over. We only have two weeks left, so I don't know what comes up with Disney Plus after that. But what if? Huh? What if? Is, is that next? is that coming out in August? I I heard it was, and then I heard they. De- I don't think it has a date yet. But yeah, because it wasn't supposed a, to be August, right? It was it wasn't a part of like their August release thing that they pumped out. I was like, oh. But I don't know. Have you been watching the Bad Batch at all? No, <laughs> I honestly haven't either. After like episode three, like it's not that it's bad. I hear it's really, really good. But it's that that's just a show that I need to I need to binge because the episodes are so short that like I mean you know every episode kind of like goes in with a greater story. But with with a lot of Clone Wars episodes, like there are some fillers here or there, um, actual fillers. But you know, I mean, they always pay contribute uh, contribution to the larger like star Wars universe itself. But yeah, that, that pretty much uh, wraps it up there, but you know, self prom- <laughs> self promotion time, everyone, you, you, you know, we got to go get in there before we uh, get into that. I uh, just wanted to remind everyone that we are, and I probably should have actually put this towards the beginning of the episode, but our Batman animated series review, I mean, not our review, but our um, giveaway is still going on. It's over um, the the instructions on how to enter is over on a pin tweet over on my Twitter, which is at Music City Nerd. All you have to do is follow us on Film Optics, that is Optics with an X, and leave us a nice five star rating and review. If you're an iPhone user, go to Apple Podcasts, give us a follow, leave us a review, leave us a five star five star rating. And if you're on Android, look us up on Podchaser and leave us a five-star rating and review as well. And 
like I said, follow us all over on Film Optics, and that'll pretty much enter you in to when the winner will be chose, uh, chosen on July 7th, so right after the big holiday weekend. And we also have one more episode that I wasn't sure when to drop, and I think we could probably drop it this Friday, but it is the holiday weekend, Devin. So I don't know. I, I think we might have to push that one back to next week to like Tuesday when everyone's back in the office <laughs> going to work, listening to podcast. So we, we were originally going to release sweet tooth, our sweet tooth season one review on this Friday, but given that it is the weekend and we want to honor, you know, uh, independence day here in the good old U S of a I think we will definitely move that to, July 7th, which is the same day that we're supposed to be, uh, I mean, not July 7th, um, July 6th, excuse me. No, wait, no. Yeah. July 6th. Sorry. I'm, tomorrow is July is July 1st. My gosh. So July 6th, we're going to move our, um, sweet tooth review, um, from this Friday to July 6th, you know, everyone is going to be, you know, with their famous and whatnot and so are we so <laughs> so yeah that pretty much uh does it here and just want to thank Devin again for coming on and we'll see you guys all next week have a safe fourth of july weekend if you are one of our american brethren citizens out there and um make sure to you know uh be mindful of your pets when it comes to um uh, fireworks and whatnot i know devin devin has a uh, a, a full load of them at, at his place so uh you do anything fun for uh for the uh, for the holiday devin he's gonna be chilling for the long weekend. love to see yeah i don't know yet <laughs> yeah i like i said parents are coming in town I think one of my friends are playing a show and that's about it just going to be chilling with the folks and having a good time. So everyone out there, again, have a safe 4th of July weekend. And we'll see you guys next week. And that's a wrap for today. Thank you all for listening. And if you enjoy the show, we greatly appreciate it. If you can leave us a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts and follow us on Twitter at Film Optics, that is Optics with an X, to stay in the know. That was Devin. My name is Christian. And we'll see you guys in the next one.